This is an introduction to the Call Quality Monitoring Service using Audio Code Session Experience Manager, also known as SEM. In this 20-minute tutorial, we'll show you how to operate the SEM and we'll demonstrate its basic capabilities. For more details and advanced operations, we recommend that you read the SEM User's Manual. Now let's get started. To connect to the SEM service, navigate to the Audio Codes provided URL. Enter the username and password you received from Audio Codes Global Services. We suggest that you change your password after the first login. Do this by clicking the User button in the top right corner of the screen and then select Change Password. After connecting to the SEM for the first time, you'll see a single SPC device in the center of the SEM network page. By clicking the SPC device and then the eye icon above the device, you'll get detailed device information such as device name, software version, IP address, number of calls handled by the device during the last three hours, call success and failure rate based on SIP signaling, voice quality color distribution such as good quality calls in green and poor quality calls in red color, average voice quality metrics, mean opinion score also known as MOS, jitter, delay and packet loss. The time range for those statistics can be changed using the buttons at the top left corner. You can set the time range for the last 3, 6, 12 or 24 hours or configure it using from or to custom dates and times. Close the device info table by clicking its top right corner. Now we'll explain how to configure network devices according to your topology and then we'll cover the main SEM functions controlled from the top menu bar buttons. Those are network, statistics, call list, alarms and reports. Please be aware that the Users and Utility buttons currently don't apply to the Call Quality Monitoring Service. To get the complete network topology, it's possible to add additional third-party network devices. First, we'll add a SIP trunk device by clicking the Add Non-Audio Codes Device button. Select the generic device and enter the SIP trunk name as SIP trunk. Click Apply and OK. Now we will position the SIP trunk device to the right of the SPC by a left click and dragging it. Next we'll add an IPPBX device and position it to the left of the SPC. To interconnect the SPC with the two new devices we'll use links. Links are logical connections between the devices. Click the SPC device and then click the Actions icon above the device. Select Add Link from the menu that opens. Using the mouse, point the link line towards the SIP trunk device. Configure the link name as SIP trunk and IP group ID as 1, assuming it's used by the SPC for the SIP trunk connection. Another common way to define a link is to use the phone URI prefix field in the link definition menu. In this case, we'll enter the number prefix to filter the outgoing and incoming calls according to the called and calling numbers. Click the Apply button to complete the link configuration. Now we'll repeat this procedure to define a second link between the SPC and the IPPBX. Configure the link name as IPPBX and assign IP group ID 2, assuming that the SPC is using IP group number 2 for the connection to the IPPBX. Those two links will provide signaling and media statistics information for calls between the SPC and the other two devices. It's possible, of course, to define more devices such as additional SIP trunks and IPBXs if necessary. 
To freeze the network view, click the Save Device Locations button. In the Network Topology view, the device and links will be displayed in green or red color according to their quality status. For example, if there are many failed or poor quality calls, the relevant device and link will be colored red. Green indicates a good device status while yellow indicates a fair status. Looking at device and link colors, you can immediately identify critical points in the VoIP network. On the right of the screen, a dashboard displays a summary of the major VoIP metrics calculated over the configured time range. The top graph shows the call success and fail rate. The middle pane shows call statistics and a voice quality pie chart. The bottom pane shows a list of active alarms reported by AudioCode's devices. By clicking the Calls List tab, SEM will display a list of calls handled by the SPC over the past three hours. The Filter button can be used to extend the time range to 24 hours or to custom dates or times of up to seven days. Please note that it can take up to 60 seconds until new calls are processed and displayed in the calls list. For each call, various information is displayed, such as caller and call E, call start time, call end time, and call duration for the answered call. The link name column indicates the links through which the call was transferred. Call status informs us if the call was executed successfully or if it was failed. Call quality informs us about the media stream quality based on metrics such as MOS or MOS, packet loss, jitter and delay. It is calculated only for answered calls that their duration is above 8 seconds. The cause column shows a reason for poor voice quality such as packet loss or MOS. Using the search field you can filter calls according to any string that appears in the calls list table. For example, by entering 101, only calls with 101 in any parameter will be displayed. If you enter a link name like zip trunk, the SEM will display only calls that pass through this link. The search field supports also regular expressions such as the vertical bar character representing OR operations and ampersand representing AND operations. Entering 101 ampersand SIP trunk, for example, will filter calls that go through the SIP trunk and whose calling or called number contains 101. Using the filter button, we can set the time range and filter the calls according to various criteria. For example, we can filter only the failed calls or the poor quality calls. Let's now set the time range to 24 hours and set the filter to display only failed calls. After clicking OK, the SEM will show only failed calls during the last 24 hours. The termination reason in the rightmost column displays the call failure reason such as 404 not found, media mismatch, or call rejected. To go back to display all calls, clear the calls filter by clicking the clear button and then click OK. Let's click a specific call in the calls list to get detailed information on it. The calls detail screen opens. The uppermost section of the screen summarizes the most important information about the call. It displays parameters such as caller and callee, call start time, call connect time, call end time, as well as the termination reason and the party that disconnected the call, such as caller or callee. Clicking the debug details displays detailed call information that the audio codes device sent to the SIM. You can view the call ID for each of the SIP caller and callee legs. These call IDs can be used to perform more extensive debugging and root cause analysis of the failed call using syslog or Wireshark traces. A graphic network representation is displayed in the screen's midsection, showing the quality of the media streams to and from the device. 
Good quality streams are colored green, while poor quality streams are colored red. Full call details for each call leg, caller to or from the device, and callee to or from the device are displayed under the graphic representation. The call details information is divided into four sections that are call quality, signaling info, media info, and trend charts. Call quality provides detailed information about MOS, packet loss, jitter, delay, and more. The color of the values, red or yellow, point to the parameter which caused the call quality to drop, such as high packet loss or poor MOS. Signaling info shows the call's full SIP details, such as SIP source and destination URIs, SIP ports, SIP interface, IP groups, and more. The Media Info section presents information about RTP streams such as voice coders, media packet duration, receive and transmit bitrate, IP addresses, and ports. Trend of media quality graphs displaying MOS, packet loss, jitter or delay variations during the call. This information is provided only for poor quality calls. The required metrics can be selected by checking them at the right side of the trend graph. The media trend can be displayed for any selected media such as caller to the device or callee from the device. Click the top right corner to close the call details page. Now let's click the Statistics tab to go to the SEM Statistics page. Here we can see graphs of successful and failed calls, maximum concurrent calls, calls voice quality, average call duration, and other metrics such as a function of time. You can select the graphs you require from the Compare options above the graphs. For example, you can select only success or fail and call quality graphs. Call statistics are calculated over the time range set in the screen's top left corner. It's by default set to the past three hours. Statistics are initially displayed for calls handled by the SPC device. To display statistics for links, click the links button located in the top left corner below the time range. Please note that it can take up to 10 minutes for the new calls to be counted in the statistics metrics. By hovering your mouse over a specific bar or pie chart, we can see call statistics calculated during this bar interval, such as success and failed calls, or good and poor quality calls. Hovering your mouse over green or red areas inside the bar displays information about good and failed calls accordingly. By clicking a specific time bar and color, green or red, inside the bar, SEM will display the related calls in the call list view. Let's click the red area of a bar to get a list of the calls that failed during the bar interval time. Now we'll return to the statistics page by clicking the statistics tab. The statistics page displays panes on the right showing call statistics and a voice quality pie chart. You can also see how the causes of poor quality calls are distributed. By clicking the red area in the pie, we will see a list of the calls that failed during the selected time range. To display all calls, click the filter button and then click the clean and OK buttons. Now let's look at the SEM alarm and quality alert section. Clicking the alarm tabs opens a list of active or historical alarms in the SEM. The alarms can be filtered according to their severity using the check boxes in the right pane. You can get more information about a specific alarm by clicking it. Click the SEM Quality Alerts button to display the list of configured alerts and to allow adding new quality alert rules. The SEM Quality Alerts table allows setting various QOE thresholds. When call statistics cross those thresholds, the SEM generates an alarm and sends the alarm data in an email to your email address. The monitoring entity can be the SPC device and the attached links. Only one rule per each monitoring entity is possible. Five QOE metrics can be used to generate alarms. 
percentage of failed calls, percentage of poor quality calls, average duration of calls, total bandwidth, maximum concurrent calls. For each metric, thresholds for major and critical alarms can be configured. To add a new rule, click the Add Rule button. Configure the device or links you want to monitor using the Level to Monitor and Entities to Monitor parameters. Configure the period over which the call statistics are calculated using the Analyze the Past parameter. By default, it's set to 60 minutes. After configuring the metric thresholds, click OK to verify the configuration and activate the alert rule. Let's click the Reports tab and then the SEM Reports button to open the SEM Reports page. The SEM allows multiple pre-configured reports to be generated. The reports can be used to present various statistics on VoIP call traffic handled by the audio codes device and links. Reports are divided into three categories, network status reports, trend reports, and top users reports. Network status reports are calculated as a summary of calls made over the entire period per monitoring device or links. Trend reports are calculated per specified time interval, such as hour or day, summarizing the same call metric entity, such as number of calls, calls quality, successful and failed calls over this interval. The x-axis here represents the selected time range. The top users reports display statistics per calling and called numbers, such as number of calls, average call duration, and voice quality. For example, let's generate a trend report for call statistics by device by clicking this report name. Before clicking the Create Report button, select a 24 hours time range and an hourly time period. After creating the report, let's click Switch to Horizontal to present the report in a more friendly way. Information in this report is presented as a bar chart in the upper section of the page and as a table in the lower section. You can scroll between charts by clicking arrows at left or right sides of the graph or directly click the metric you want information on such as success or fail rate, total duration, average duration, or call quality. SEM also supports automatic generation of scheduled reports. These are saved in the SEM server and can be forwarded to your email address. By clicking the Scheduled Reports button, SEM will display a list of active reports. To add a new report, click the Add Rule button and do the following. From Report Name drop-down, select the report you want to generate from the list of available reports. Enter the scheduler name. It's a single string without spaces, for example, M800 underscore report. Optionally enter a report description, for example, daily call statistics trend. Define scheduler settings, for example, daily. Under run report select, for example, the no end option. Under mail settings, select the forward option and then enter the email address to which to forward the generated reports. Click OK to verify the configuration. You can configure additional reports in the same way. Scheduled reports can be paused or run, edited or deleted by clicking the corresponding icon in the reports row. This concludes our short tutorial about the basic SEM operations and its capabilities. For more detailed explanation of SEM, please refer to the SEM user's manual. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.